course, we would be in the Olympics for poverty. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you know, our uh, thing is hard heads, so I'm hard headed. Seven world hard head. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't claim any um any projects because I didn't live there long enough, but my family from them. Well, that's good. Where did, where, where, when did y'all move out? I think when I was five. I hope my mama don't listen to this because she's going to be red pinning for every inaccuracy I say. I don't know. I don't remember. I was like five. And then I was eight when Katrina hit. So, like. Okay. Yeah. Like you from the same, but no. That's long enough. You ain't never left New Orleans. I mean, you left, but. I'm trying to find my way out. <laughs> <laughs> Right now, you done found your way in the Pickles House. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Pickles House. Um, I got an exciting one here today. My my friend, uh, she is one of comedy, New Orleans comedy uh, ladies. Ladies of New Orleans comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I got two stoned before this one, bro. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she is one of the, the best New Orleans, Louisiana uh, lady female comics that we have or just com comedian period she's that funny oh my God. um she's on uh, almost every show you turn your head at and she gets big promotions out of state and everything and i'm excited to have her here everybody welcome saya meads thank you oh my yeah, God. yeah how you doing today my friend i love how you can hear it and my throat is wet like you just <laughs> hear it i don't know i just i don't know it's too intimate it's too intimate it's too intimate <laughs> is this your first podcast you ever did no no? Mm -mm. I, which other one? Might you be the second. I don't know. <laughs> what else one you got to do? Um, I did Jake's. Jake who? Costin? Yeah. Jake's got a podcast? He got two. What you mean? I don't know. You never told me about him. I'm weak. It is Costin, right? Um, glasses. Jewish like, guy? Yeah, Glasses looks like the villain from the Lovely Bones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we talking about, oh, I got something to talk to him about then. I, he might have just started that. He did. He didn't release any episodes yet. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. That's what's up. My friend, Saya. So you, you were born and raised in the St. Bernard Projects? Not raised fully, but. Yeah, I was I was born there. Where'd y'all move until um, after that? We moved off Frenchman right after that, and then like a month into us living there, then that's when Katrina hit. And then we went to, what's that bitch called? Columbus, Georgia. Why Columbus? I don't fucking know. Georgia? You left Georgia. Louisiana? Yeah, for uh, Katrina. Georgia. And we came right back. Georgia. Uh, how was it in Georgia? Boring as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you do nothing. I like, they're kind of hills out there. You know, they got like hilly. It's a hilly area. I don't like that. No? No. I no. didn't like that at all. <laughs> you, so you wouldn't like to go to uh, Arkansas? Mm. Just mountainous and trees? Arkansas ain't for me. <coughs> and I only say Arkansas because it makes them mad. You like that that, that uh, below sea level? Yeah. I like for my lungs to be flooded with humidity. <laughs> 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 That's what you get down here. If I don't halfway drown in my sleep, I'm not happy. Bro, when I leave Louisiana for like a week, I start breathing like better. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, <sighs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's a good feeling to have your like lungs open up for a little while. It's oh, just yeah, my allergies are so bad too. You gonna hear me sniffling the whole time. Yeah, it's like that for a lot of people. Me too, bro. I always got bad allergies, and right now with the weather going back and forth from cold to hot, how it does, it really fucks with me. Mm. I ain't had nothing to say to that. I don't know if you was looking at me like that. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, so so how were you in school? Did you make good grades in school? Um, I had ADHD. That's all you need to know. So that's, uh, no? No. Um, when I was medicated, straight A's. Okay. When I wasn't, I do what the fuck I want. Right. Yeah. So, um. Were you only child? I don't give big middle child energy. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm a, uh, <laughs> I'm a youngest. I'm a comedian. You um, know. Uh, <laughs> clearly, I'm a middle child. Okay. Uh, but no, um, I aced all tests and stuff. I was just, I didn't, I didn't want to do work. I guess that was my problem. I went okay. to Xavier and then I was like, this ain't for me. And then now look at me, a comedian. Yeah. I, uh, I had a problem. Like I was real smart in school, but I didn't like doing the shit either. I, I was one of those kids that could sit there and listen mm -hmm. and pass the test. Me too. 
you know. I just didn't want to do the work. It, exactly. That, and I get that from a lot of comics. You know what I mean? Like we're we're really smart people, but we have our ways of doing shit, and we don't want to be talk, told about them because mm-hmm. this is, you know, the way we are. <laughs> the way we learn and the way we uh, do all this, it's uh, I get that a lot. You know what I mean from from the loner perspective. We got a lot of loners as comics. Mm. Um, were you a loner in school? No, no, that was popular. You a, a butterfly, as they say, a social butterfly. I'm like a, I was like a in between. I'm, I was like a, a introvert, ex- extrovert. Like I was well known. That's why I started doing stand up school. Okay. Um, really? Mm-hmm. What what grade? Uh, tenth. Tenth grade. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, I was doing events for the school. It was fun. You uh, so tell me about that. Tell me how did you uh, get started with the events and get into the comedy portion? You know Jeff D. Yeah. That was my uh, my IB Shout film teacher. Shout out to Jeff D. He was my IB film teacher, and he's the reason why I do stand up. No shit. Yeah. Um. He was the drama. What obviously. school? He was the dr- um International High, which is the new Rob Wayne, I guess. I guess they just share the same building. I don't know if you can call it the new Rob Wayne. Okay, I don't know where that is. Yeah, nobody did. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, it started off um, with him wanting to do, like, an after-school open mic, I guess, like, for pe- for students that wanted to show talent. I didn't know what stand-up was. I wasn't. I don't really watch TV. Um, never okay. did. It doesn't hold my attention. So, like, I didn't really, like, do anything, but I don't know why stand-up came to mind. Didn't even really know what it was, but I wrote my name down. Jeff was teaching kids stand-up? No, he taught me stand-up, but okay. he was teaching um, drama, and he was teaching IB Film 1 and 2, and I got the International Baccalaureate Program. I was in the IB program for um, junior and senior high. Wait, junior and senior. Okay. Sorry. Um, and so I signed up for the stand-up open mic and we that's still pretty talk cool about it sounds like like i just had 4-h you know 4-h <laughs> you never honors? no uh, definitely not honors uh <laughs> i used to make good grades though 4-h is like a fucking club that uh kids did like i i got into like a cooking that's where i found out i can cook good you know i won fourth place in the state with a potato salad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you too powerful. Ain't no way you win it with a potato with salad. With a, a shrimp potato salad, dude. <laughs> you must be stopped. Like, <laughs> There's a girl to this day that is pissed off because I beat her in the school uh, cooking contest. <laughs> I'm competitive too. I did speech and debate. And I did Chinese bridge. Uh, I was just Chinese like, bridge. What is that? It's a um, it's a international um, Chinese competition. I went to an international school, so I, I took, okay. I, and I'm hard-headed, so clearly I didn't want to take French and Spanish, and they only offered sprint, wait, French, Spanish, Vietnamese, and Chinese. We didn't offer Vietnamese at that time. And French, Spanish, and Chinese and Arabic. Damn. And I was like, oh, well, shit, I might as well learn Chinese. And <laughs> time to learn Arabic. That's. <laughs> I was like, I'm about to do no fucking French and Spanish. <laughs> um, so I decided to learn Chinese, and that kind of took me far. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah. I had a lot of fun. I'm still intermediate in it. Um, I could get around, and I could live That's there for a That's fucking cool. Bit. Um, yeah, you, you heard my joke about um, me going to China and meeting all the Africans, right? That was a true story. Yeah. I didn't make that up. Like, okay. Yeah. Um, and it was just, it was really fucking fun. Um, but yeah, um, after I did that set, at, that stand up set, my first stand up set, I still. So wait, hold on. About. You got into, um, what were you doing? What kind of, um, first off, you were doing, you said you were doing an event for Jeff D? No, I was doing um, events for the school. Like Events for that program you were in. Mm-mm, I was doing events for the school. For the school. The whole school. Um, so if they were doing, like we were on TV once, I guess, and I did like two minutes because it was a very tight schedule, but they wanted to like um, showcase like the students' talents and what we did at International High mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, I did um, like pep rallies, stuff like that, where you know it was basically just. That's like, awesome, dude. It so was wait, really fun. that dude, that's fucking, that's mind blowing to me right now because you're the first person to ever get the. So uh, wait, tell everybody how old you are, right? Now. I just turned twenty five. Just turned twenty five. How old? How old were you then? Fifteen. Fifteen. So you've been doing this ten years already. Consistently a year and a half, but um, okay. yeah, I've been doing it for ten years. Okay, like off and on and stuff. Mm-hmm. All right, but that's awesome, dude. So, <laughs> the first time you got up, what was it like? I was like, oh, this is for me. And well, you were in front of your peers, though, right? Yeah, I was in front of the majority of the school. 
So you felt more comfortable doing it that way? Yeah, I was. I set that shit off. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, "Ooh, who is this bitch?" <laughs> <laughs> you remember any of your jokes? Yep, I was doing a joke. Uh, me and Mr. D still talk about. It. I still call him Mr. D. Like, yeah, that's, he was my teacher. <laughs> <laughs> me and Mr. D. What up, was, Mr. D? <laughs> what I look like calling him Jeff? I didn't. I feel like my mama go materialize and ask me if I shot marbles with him. Yeah, my mother do that. dude, he's one of the comics that I listen to. You know, he's a 20 year him. plus vet. Mm, I love Mr. D. Sometimes I still show up to his house. Yeah. Like, what, what, what are we doing? <laughs> not Woody Woo, I'm not affiliated with anything. <laughs> but, you know, he was also the um, the speech and debate teacher, too. So, yeah? Yeah, he just did too much for the school. Um, what was the question? The question is, uh, <laughs> how was it the first time you went up in front of your peers? Like, and, and so you were... I was already known for being a class clown. Like, that was oh, yeah? my thing. So like it was a it, it gave me the what, where did that transition? Let me ask you, where did that transition come in? Did like Jeff see you and and specifically point you out and say, Hey, I think you got something, try stand up? It's or? like almost exactly what he said. Really? <laughs> yeah. So um, he didn't do that with anybody else? No, because um they were scrubs. <laughs> well, Let me stop. Yeah, no, you <laughs> get in there. Nobody else did stand up. I think everybody yeah. else did singing and stuff like that. Like rap, uh, somebody tried to dance. Um, but he suggested it to you. Yeah. Because he saw you were a class clown, you think? Well, I was, I've been a class clown. Yeah. Um, I've been the stupidest motherfucker to ever exist. Um, not ever exist. There's Chris Rock. But you know what I'm saying. Um, yeah. What am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> so right after that, um, I was about to go home, and he was already taking me home like every other day anyway because yeah. like he was my favorite teacher. And he was like, you got something. Let me show you some ropes. And he was like, the rule of three. And that's the only thing I remember because I stopped listening to everything else. But, like, <laughs> I, I, again, I was unmedicated. Yeah. <laughs> but then we were, like, honing different skills through speech and debate. Like, I did speech events. I did humorous interpretation. Okay. And that was his idea. And I brought home our first trophy. Did you? First time I motherfucking So what's it, that whoop. about? Oh, yeah. oh. Speech and debate. What's that about? Um, speech and debate is exactly what you think it is. Like speech events and debate events. Speech events are more um just sounds like you arguing your point. Well that's that. debate. Now speech events are more um nuanced, I believe, than debate. Like debate is pretty straightforward. Okay. Um speech events had like duo where you get a script and y'all kinda act out. Um there was like that shit motive that was a motivational but like improv motivational made people mm -hmm. cry i didn't understand how they did that shit really? and i did humorous interpretation where i took something and i made it funny and i made a performance for it okay and it was fun as fuck nice it was really fun. That's awesome that you got to be in that kind of environment in school we didn't have anything like that nothing you know that's yeah. your that's you your like high school you gen x huh I'm or gen or millennial what's 86 80s millennial? I'm born in 86. Oh, my God. I'm an 80s baby. I mean, not oh, my God. I'm sorry. But like <laughs> I know. I'm old, bro. I know. It's all right. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like anything in the 80s is just grayed out to me. I don't, it's a lawless land. Man. Is it? <laughs> 97 is when life began. 97 is like when life began for you? Well, yeah. I was born in 97. But you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> in general. So, <laughs> all right. Um, how much did you get to do comedy in your school from, like, 10th grade to the time you graduated? I did, like, every event. Like, it was, um, I was I was the school's comedian. <laughs> That's just what I did. I also did morning announcements. So, uh, morning and afternoon announcements to get people to pay attention to them. That's amazing. Um, and I taught some classes, and that was it. You taught classes? Yeah. What kind of classes? I taught Chinese. You taught Chinese? That's I taught I taught, <laughs> I taught Ivory Chinese one and two because we couldn't find a Chinese teacher. Um and they But um, you were that good in were you I, I, getting checks? Did no. the school pay you? Because it sounds like they should have been paying you. The school um actually wiped my senior fee, my senior budget. Okay. So they paid the budget. Um, nice. And I taught Ivy Chinese one and two. Well, not as many one, but like um, I was in Ch Ivy Chinese two, and I had my own class that I was like in separately because I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. So um, I was the only Ivy Chinese immersion 
like where they told the, taught the whole class in Chinese. Like I, yeah. used, I used to be able to understand it to where you could teach a class in it in the wow. language, but like now it's just I understand the majority of the stuff that I was taught, but like I've been out of practice. Yeah, I get that. You know, you should get back in practice and, and like that would be a good little job you could probably do and enjoy. Yeah, I do. I enjoy it. Sometimes I still go on um. What's that? Sometimes I still go on websites and see if I can still like understand it. Or I have my friends that are in China who I talk to sometimes. Okay. And we practice. Do you? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Like, I wish I could fucking speak another language. Italian mostly. Uh, when I was in high school, they offered French and Spanish, and I was like, oh, I want French. And the French teacher didn't get rehired. So <laughs> they put me in Spanish class, and I skipped most of them. And my Spanish teacher... <laughs> Hated me. She hated me, bro. She fucking hated me. What you do? You were a class clown when you did. I was a up? class clown, bro. Mm-hmm. And I didn't you try like to be. You looked like you was a class clown. I, was, I had fun in school, you know. Um, <laughs> I did. I had one teacher tell me she was like, "You gonna end up being Angola." I was like, Not "That's Angola." I was, yeah, I was like, "That's <laughs> fucked up." I didn't know what it was at the time. I was, <laughs> she would tell that to certain students, and I was one of them. Uh, <laughs> but my Spanish teacher, even when I got serious, I was like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna do this." Um, she kicked me out the class because she thought I was playing, you know? And I was like, I just can't win with this Spanish stuff. Okay. Um, but, yeah, that's awesome that you know uh, Chinese, bro. Maybe... I'm intermediate. You know, you can talk for the government and... Uh, no, I'm going to probably start the trade war or something because I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> 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 Interpret, I interpret those th- things that the government's trying to look at what China's saying on, on yeah, the Yeah, because, like, Chinese is a hard language in the yeah. fact that not the writing but in the fact that they reuse the same words. Like, it's a tonal word. Oh, so, yeah. like, bing and bing aren't the same thing. Like, you really? know, that's why I was like, you, get, is you have to listen to context heavily. Like, it's just, I'm not... I was like, ah, this is bullshit. I don't like that. <laughs> but I liked it enough to take it for five years and to go to China. But, like, you know... Wow. But, like... Yeah. That's fucking awesome. So you obviously graduated. Uh, did you graduate with honors? Yes. No. No. <laughs> I got kicked out of the IB program because I was doing you, too much. What would you do uh, after high school? After high school, I went to Xavier for um, a year and a half, almost two years. Um, and then I did stand up almost exclusively. Really? Yeah. And then I'm done. Well, not uh, no. Did not you get to do it in place. Xavier? Hmm. Did you get to do stand up in Xavier? No, I should have. I was I, I was a little intimidated by the um, judgmental ass crowd, um, but you know what? I probably should have, and I might hit them up to do it because I ain't no bitch. You definitely should, huh. bro. I ain't no little bitch boy. You ain't, <laughs> you ain't no bitch. You Siamese, baby. You going up there <laughs> and let them know. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck if you laugh or not, bitch. <laughs> I'm not yeah. here to, uh, for your entertainment. First of all, <laughs> I do do that. I do love it. I love that. That's, like, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You, uh, was, was the word we used for your comedy earlier? Stubborn. 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 I am very, I'm very hard-headed. No, it's great, bro. Um, you should hit up Xavier and start doing colleges, you know? That's coming up. These fucking kids today need to laugh at something. <laughs> humor is cursed. I love it. <laughs> the humor is cursed? No, I meant their kind of humor specifically is cursed. Uh, well, I, I don't know why I'm saying there. I'm Gen Z. So, I don't know why. You're the same. I see. I don't, I I don't even look at all that shit. Um... Uh, I just know you're 10 years younger than me. 11. <laughs> 11 years younger than me, and you got math down. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, tell me, like, how long, when you got out of school, how long did it take you to start doing comedy again? Oh, it wasn't nothing. Okay, so um, the reason why I got into our scene is because after I graduated, uh, Mr. D hit me up, and he was like, there's some people I want you to meet. And so he um, he put me in a group chat with Geneva. Uh-huh. Geneva was the first comedian that I met okay. in New Orleans. Um, and he said he just sent me an address, and he was like, go there. And that was it. <laughs> go there at this time. Yeah. And he wanted me to go. He wanted me to try out for her group. And um, she, she liked me. And they taught me a bunch of different things, like producing and stuff like that before that other shit. 
Um, <laughs> Producing's rough, some, you know what I mean? That I ain't never did it. Mental fucking, uh, it's a mental game with producing mostly. No, I don't want to produce anything because if people I know don't show up, then I'm going to shoot all y'all. Yeah. Like, because you knew <laughs> about the event, bitch. That's what I'm saying. It's I'm a sensitive. mental fucking game, dude. I'm sensitive. Why the fuck you ain't show up? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm thinking about producing some stuff. You should, bro. Yeah, I want my own mic. I want my own monthly show somewhere. Yeah, that's, I mean, dude, that's what I'm, I'm revamping my shit right now. It's in fucking works. But I book off my mic. You know what I mean? You have that's that's the that's what I learned off of Red Bean. That's what Red Bean does. You know what I mean? Hollow Wolf. You book off your mic. Who's doing good? You're gonna pull from that pool first. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got people that go to your mic uh, every week, and you see them get better, and you see that progress. It's like, yo, here's a little reward. Come do my show. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I do that all the time. And that's what you would have for your show. You know what I mean? It's what Ryan does. It's what uh, um, people who have their open mics and stuff, mm-hmm. um, it gets you better. It gets you better at, at it makes your level, you, you see your level go from here to up here uh, quicker also. Um, but you also get to produce your shows and you can pull from your pool. You don't just have to go off a of whim and say, all right, I know this person's funny, that's great. You could have anybody you want on your show, but you also, as a, a show runner um, who runs an open mic, you can bring your people in. You're all right. You're, I'm making you one of my comics now. You know what I mean? And showing you the way I do things and giving you a little experience. Mm. You know? I guess. I'm trying not to. You can let it out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm trying not to <laughs> be nasty in this mic. It's all right. Uh, you got to sprite. You got to let out the gas sometimes. You got to let out the gas, you know? Mm, I got a lot of ideas. Um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have a lot of ideas. <laughs> um, and sometimes it's just a follow through. I'm really trying to be not a sloth. But nah, doing you know, stuff is so, not doing stuff is so delicious. The, like, you know? <laughs> yeah, I understand. But the comedy journey is what you make of it. You know, we all take it where we want to take it. You know, mm-hmm. um, you've got to do some great things in our scene, bro. I've gotten to watch you get picked up by Bob Sum- Sumner. That's how you say his name. That man is hilarious. I love Mr. Sumner. How did you uh, meet him? He um, was down here, and he was on his Back to Basics tour looking for um, talent. Mm-hmm. And he did, he hosted, pro- not hosted, but, like, he was at Proving Ground in the back looking for people. Oh, yeah, I uh, I was there that night. Mm. Yeah. He bumped into me. He, <laughs> I was walking by and I felt like an elbow, and I, I was like, "Oh my bad." I didn't know who he was. So I was like, "Oh my bad," uh, and I kept going just to go look at the list, you know. That mic was something else, dude. It was four people. I remember that mic. I remember like four of us slaughtered. I, was, I me and you were two of them that slaughtered. You know, I remember your set that night. You fucking wrecked the room. And I don't know who that bitch was. I mean, you <laughs> put your nigga in the bucket. And there was two. There was two other people who wrecked the room too, and I can't remember who they was. But I remember your set specifically that night because I was like, "Damn, who is this girl?" Out of twenty people. <laughs> out of uh, yeah, out of twenty people, I was like, "Cause I never really seen you do comedy before." But that night, from that night, I was like, "Who the fuck is this chick?" You know, she because you slaughtered, you know, and I see why he picked you out that room, you Aww. know. There was only four of us did that good that yeah, night. It was that night. That night, it that was, was the most brutal night. It was a rough night for people that yeah, night. Yeah, because like these, the people were just staring, like, entertain me. <laughs> right. It was, was a full room, too. You was coming out with your heaviest hitters, and people were just, get the fuck off the stage. Yeah. Nobody said that, but that was the aura in the room. Mm-hmm. That's my favorite kind of aura. But that, that room is, that's another special room that we have, fucking that high hole lounge. Mm-hmm. It's uh that that stage was my first bomb, and that was one of the roughest bombs, dude. When they fucking when you bomb in that room, that is a fucking bomb. Mm-hmm. You ever took an L in that room? No. <laughs> They'll oh, make you work right. harder. It'll make you work harder. Well, I took definitely. I took a, I took a lowercase L in that room, like you know, yeah. the lowercase. I mean, everybody takes that lowercase L in that room, but I took a fucking fat fucking <laughs> fuck off the stage, you know, <laughs> in mm-hmm. that room. And I have bombed t- 
terribly twice in my life, and you have a bomb so bad you went and cried. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's what I'm saying. That was one of the ones I had to rethink everything. That was my second time getting on stage too in the scene, and I had took a fat loss. <laughs> it was bad, bro. <laughs> it was. <laughs> The next comic got on stage making fun of me and shit. I was like, took my only punchline and used it as a punchline up top. I was like, damn. That's hilarious, <laughs> but that's also real rude. It, comes it is rude, dog. It was. It was. You know what I mean? But that dude's not even around right now anymore. Uh, I'm weak. You know? Um, he alive, right? Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's alive. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> not alive. I, he's not around here no more. I don't know what happens to him, bro. Um, Spill the tea. Who was it? But, uh... Ryan, I don't remember his last name. He's a black dude, tall. You know what I'm talking about? Didn't know we had black Ryans. <laughs> I don't know. He was he was around for a while too. That's it surprised me he that he stopped. He didn't belong to us. The name Ryan. That's not a black name. We don't do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. That made my balls itch. We don't have black Ryans. We don't do that. Uh, well, he used to be around before the uh, pandemic. He was around a little bit after. We came back. I don't know where he went. I wasn't um, I wasn't in the community too heavy then. I would do stand up like once every like three four months, and then yeah. I would just like disappear again. Um, and so this last year, twenty twenty two has been the year I've been doing stand up the most. Yeah. Yeah, I was on stage like every fucking week, um, a few times a week actually. That's good. Um, yeah, it was good, but. I don't know. I love the um, kill then disappear. That was my that was my thing. Mm -hmm. Kill disappear. I might do stand up three times a year. It leaves that aspect of wanting more. Get you back over here and put you back on the stage. You know, people uh, uh, in the crowd loves to see you come back. You know, and I get that. We can go up on stage here every night. You mm -hmm. know what I mean. And if you do that every night for years on years, you can just lose that appeal. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've recently stepped back. Uh, I kind of, like, and go to different places and stuff like that. I and, need to do that. And it's, like, just to keep you fresh, because it's good for your soul to get to a new area also. Keep mm -hmm. you fresh, you know, um, and it keeps you wanting to keep doing your thing because you keep coming around here and keep working the same jokes, the same jokes. People don't laugh at that shit no more. You know? Well, you, gotta, you can tweak them. I mean, dude, I've been pumping out fucking material around this bitch for a while, you know what I'm saying? And I want to fucking take all that material and go and see how it uh, fares in other places. And I have been doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, how long, how many places have you gotten to perform? I know you got to do New York, which is amazing. I did New York last year, um, L.A. I did um, Jersey, New Orleans, Where'd Florida. you get to go in Jersey? Um, I went. To I want to go to Jersey this year. I'm going to New York February for my first time. Fucking right. What you February. gonna do in New York? Uh, I don't know yet. I got. Um, I'm in Scranton, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. on the, the 11th. I'm opening for Jen Florentine, and from there, that show runner, that uh, the club owner's taking me to New York. Hmm. So before, been like two days before that show. But I was trying to hook up something in New Jersey afterward because it's like two hours away from Scranton. Mm. And then I'm going to go hit Detroit. Jersey was fun. Yeah. I did Newark, and I did the Willingboro Comedy Festival with Mr. Sumner, his, um, okay. his festival. Um, and, yeah, um, but I, I want to travel way more this year. I'm going back to New York in June. I'm doing um, the Laugh Factory again um, in in July, um, I'm going to be, well, I, I plan on doing L.A. a few times this year, um, Vegas, um, Arkansas, I believe, um, Atlanta. Like, you know, I plan on, like, really getting out there this year. Like, this is my year of travel. Mm -hmm. And obviously, New Orleans. Yeah, but dude, it is the year of travel. I'm getting the fuck out of here, especially, like, February. I'm gone, bro. I'm, I got some good road shows booked. I'm going to go hit up. I'm going to try to. I got a new booker, of, uh, and I'm going to hit him up and be like, yo, uh, I'm going to be up north, and they're in Chicago. So I've never gotten to really do anything in Chicago yet. So mm -hmm. I'm going to try to go do some shows in Chicago, um, February, maybe March area. Um, I'm thinking more February after the 19th. You know, I'm trying to get some stuff going. But I go to Detroit. You ever been to Detroit a lot? I have not. 
and that's a good place too, bro. The, I just do the punchline out there sometimes, and they got some good clubs, bro. That punchline, it's a black room, mm -hmm. and they will stare through your soul, even if you're funny. And I love it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like, oh, y'all ain't gonna scare me, dog. You know? <laughs> yeah, you can, it, that that is. Came and gone, you know. Right. You the can, amount of L's I took last year and don't, uh -huh. you know, the motherfucker scared You me. can decide to fucking uh, not laugh if you and, and not have a good time, but you know that's you your. You my joke around that. Right. <laughs> it's uh, is that it, yeah? But you can decide to, or you can have a good time. You know, you're not gonna, cause I fuck with them back. I watched them run a couple white people off in that room. I'm like, y'all ain't gonna do that shit to me, bro. I'm from New Orleans. Y'all are, <laughs> y'all fucking up. Y'all ain't doing. You might as well just have a good time with me. Because we're going to have some fun it regardless. It's going to be a hostage situation because I'm going to tell my jokes. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it's up to you. Right. Yeah. But now nah, it's a, in the, the punchline in Detroit is a learning experience. You know, um, if I wouldn't have done certain shows down here, you know, I would have been eating alive in that room. <gasps> eating alive, dude. Eating alive, you know. I have bombed bad enough to make me rethink this twice. Yeah. One was um, in Hammond, I believe. Was it Hammond? Yeah. Oh, my God. It was so bad. I, like, they paid me <laughs> for, like, 20 minutes, and I think I did seven. Like, Ooh. yeah, I went through all of my jokes, and we just stared at each other, and I got off stage. <laughs> and I was like, I cried my motherfucking eyes out. I was just sitting there crying <laughs> with a fat ass. I didn't understand how you could do both. Oh, like, you know, but shit. I forgot. You, yeah, you remember? I remember. You were there. Oh. <laughs> you were fucking there. Oh, the second one. Worst. That was the second one? Yeah, that was the worst I've ever eaten shit. You know what? Oh. That oh. made me notice you more after that. After that, because we talked. We were on the same fucking show. Yeah, I, I remember that shit. my eyes out. You, we came and talked, and you had your little boyfriend with you, and I was like, oh, Lord, get away from her right now. She doesn't <laughs> want nothing to do with you, dude. Like, <laughs> I almost wanted to tell him that. You know what I'm saying? Because you were covered to, talking to another comic. You were talking to me, and I was like, look, bro, you know, just you're going to do better. It's it's no no worries. And I let you know that you're, you're still good. It's just we we all catch that fucking bomb. That was you the know? worst and, I ever bombed. And but we, you know, <laughs> I used the worst yeah, I felt so bad, bro. I was like, fuck, man. Uh, but after that, like, um, so the first time I saw you destroy in fucking high ho, that gives you, you know, that made me look at you. The second time, that's when we, I think that was the first show we did together. So, I don't think so, but it no, was the first one I remember. Yeah, but that's the one that also made me remember um, you even more because I started watching you do shit around the scene. I was like, that's resilience you know what i mean you showed a level of resilience and bounce back no that, i'm hard-headed that's the problem i mean dude i wasn't you fucking, gonna make that be my last show <laughs> nah nah <laughs> bro but you fucking you you can't bounce back like a savage you know and that's what you're supposed to do you know we all take our l's you know what i'm saying and you took that motherfucker and you rolled with it that made you a better comic that night. I would wake up in a cold sweat thinking about that shit you know, for like but the first it was a, two months. It was a room full of old white people, too. They were yeah. they were giving me a rough time. You know what I mean? No, they weren't. Yeah, I mean, I got a couple laughs. You know what I'm saying? No, but, until you got to your black Jesus joke. But like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus is black, and I'm going to tell all the white people that because I don't want y'all to get up there and be like, oh, I was wrong. <laughs> you know? <laughs> he came to visit me, people. It's my dog. Uh <laughs> They did not like that joke. No, they don't, bro. I, I'll, I'll shut it right up. Like, I go to Mississippi and say that shit or something like that. That's why I also I put a new part to that, um, to where I make uh, a racist. Like, I always look for the racist in the room, you know. We, and then I love bullying the audience. And then I'll, like, make my face turn red because they're in, like, an explosion kind of thing because that's what they do as when I say that. You know, I find the racist in the room. And it's uh, it, it's funny, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> when he told me to do that joke, I was like, "What? How? What? Are they gonna believe me?" And God was like, "They're gonna, they're gonna think it's a joke." And I was like, "Okay, okay, <laughs> we're good." <laughs> I love social experiments during stand up <laughs> and everything. I just I love it <laughs> because I look at stand up as um, a platform to burden people with the atrocities of my imagination. Ah. <laughs> I love that. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I get up there to do. Um, but that Hammond show taught me one important thing, yeah. and that was I need to get comfortable with silence. 
Yeah. So what I started yeah. doing was I was like, okay, so my problem is that I'm somebody that has like um, high laughs per minute. Mm-hmm. So um, I need variety to my jokes. So I started adding longer jokes or longer stories with like um, punchlines here and there that had a big um, build up. The West and Bank. Don't even don't say that shit. The West Bank. Oh God, we're on, no, we're not on the West Bank. Okay, <laughs> no, we're not on the West Bank. We ain't shout that. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I know I'm not. I know we ain't on the West Bank because I'm not like itchy. So. <laughs> No, that's a, uh, but yeah, I like I like the way you've been uh, redoing your your stories and stuff. Actually, there's um, you keep the room captivated. It's Thank it's you. great. It's burdening. I like it's bothering people. <laughs> 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 um, and so I also decided to take it a step further, and I was like, okay, well now I have the long jokes down where I'm comfortable with silence. Now I have to have jokes that are a little controversial. Okay. Or I'm not controversial, but a lot of jokes that might make people uncomfortable, but like make me happy. So, so what is your writing process like? How do you? I don't have one. You, you, you got one. Maybe you don't. Do you write on stage, or you write in your head and just take it on stage? I sit down. You and I think about a topic, and I write everything that comes to mind. In a book, physically. Um. Yeah, I have to see things like um. And then I'm yeah. like, okay, um, well, one of the things I feel like my stand-up is missing most times is what am I trying to say with it? Like, um, mm. I, I find myself getting into the pitfall of this is funny and that's enough. But, like, stand-up is still a platform in a way. Yeah. So, like, um, yeah, that's my writing process. Everything that um, I say on stage is shit that just came to mind. Well, no, that's, I don't want to run past that point right quick because you just hit something that a lot of comics want, which is a message. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I think comics get caught up in wanting a message more than funny first. Some of them, you know, or people who are trying to get, and, and you know what I mean? Everybody, Because everybody wants a voice. But we're doing comedy, so you got to be funny first, I'd say. And that's what you have down, you know what I mean? And when I figured that out, I was like, I can implement a message in my jokes, in between my jokes, and the audience won't even fucking know I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and that's what I do in my set. You know, when I talk to the crowd, uh, they they don't know that I'm implementing a message into their soul. You know, and most of the time that message is love. You know, mm-hmm. uh, so that's the kind of fucking message that you can you can throw in there. You know. Um, well, so what? Um, I feel like um, I feel like ADHD is definitely my um, my superpower when it comes to stand up. It makes my sets um, stand out, and it makes them um, what's the word I'm looking for? It makes them like just you know it makes them stand out. Um, mm-hmm. because of, like my premises. And so one of my strong suits is I have great premises and, um, jokes. Yeah. Those aren't things I have problems with. The problems that I have is structure and direction. Okay. And, um, one thing that I don't think people think about a lot with stand up is that the way you do, not the way you do your jokes, but the way you structure your jokes and the way you order them. Um, we always trying to figure we're always yeah. trying to figure out it's a puzzle. the optimal yeah the optimal way yeah. to do jokes but like it's a science to it um with performance and joke writing and even appearance mm-hmm. like the, even the way you look um which um I never care about how I look so <laughs> you always look fabulous on stage well girl. thank you that's the um melanin the aura of <laughs> I, I wasn't gonna say melanin, but <laughs> I don't know. I was gonna say the aura of Saya. <laughs> well, that's a given, but <laughs> but no. She's um, like, I'm black, bitch. That's why. <laughs> no, I've seen some rough black people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> know a few. Um, that wasn't nice. I'm joking. Am I? Am I? Um, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot, Graham. You remember the question? <laughs> was there even a question or were we just oh no no shit? it was uh your writing process uh, we were talking about your writing process so um how's that and you're telling me how you uh what you are good with and what your struggles are with but i put and you're telling me that you you struggle with structure you think and honestly uh, from watching your sets i think you're pretty structured 
oh, that took time. Yeah, like, I that's mean, that's one of the only things that's manufactured. And that's what I, uh, another thing was the message. You know, we yeah. were talking about message. If you wanted to put like a message, and I think that's that's right. You should put a message in there. Oh no, I'm not saying I should. Whatever um, message you want to implement. I'm trying to figure out what that is. Like you know how to develop um like. A set is a bunch of bits that relate to each other. Yeah. So my um, premises are all so out there, it's hard to figure out what the central thing that I'm trying to say with this set is. Okay. Um, and, like, I have, like, for example, my sets include um, the time that um, <laughs> my sets are – when I got, uh, when I went to China, met a group of Africans, and they told me how much I'd be worth in a dowry. That time, <laughs> um, I was Muslim for 20 business days. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and time, my mama lied to me about my daddy working at Dairy Queen when he was in prison for seven years. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, those okay. don't relate to each other. Well, also, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you could just <laughs> have sets, you know, you could just have sets and don't worry about the message bet in between those certain sets. That you're going to have sets for any room you step into. My message is just um, ADHD. Uh, not really <laughs> no, you, uh, it's, it's, I mean, how are you going to put that out there for the people who have ADHD? If that's what you want a message about ADHD, do you talk about ADHD already? No, but you can tell I got it. Well, not necessarily. I mean, like when I hit the stage, like, um, so, um, I used so. Well, one thing see, I don't diagnose people. I'm not that kind of person. Yeah, so I'm when you hit the person. stage, I don't care what you have. I'm I'm looking at are you structured? Do you have jokes? You know what I mean? Are they um flowing? Are they sewed together properly? You know what I'm saying? And you have all that. Um, so if you want a message about ADHD, you write a bunch of fucking ADHD jokes. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I, um, hmm. what am I trying to say? My message wasn't ADHD, I was just joking, <laughs> but I was, I was in a, I, I mean, you just took that <laughs> and ran with it, I was joking. I was just trying to help. Um, I am thinking about, so what I got from all three of those sets um, just three, that's just three sets that I typically do, and the yeah. the one where I made my own religion, fucking love that set. That's more of a, um, that's more of a, a self-decadent joke. Right? Yeah. A self-indulgent joke. That's one of those Actually, jokes that fuck with the crowd, too. Yeah, I fucking love that. Mm -hmm. Um, but what I got from all of that, um, is that I, is that, sure identity, that mic. is that identity, is malleable, like is that identity is moldable and uh -huh. it's not always the same everywhere. Like okay. in Africa, not in Africa, in China, when I was with um, the Africans, I say the Africans because there were so many different cultures mm -hmm. there. Um, when I was in China and I met them, my identity was 150 chicken, 150 cows, and 1,250 chickens. Yeah. But um, when I was with, um, like when I was with my mama, I was a child who she lied to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. Identity isn't always the same. We yeah, see, that's a good. With different people, actually, you know what? I figured it out as I was talking. That's a good message. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm a um, I'm a I'm a verbal processor. Like I have to talk, and then uh -huh. I, that's how I figure my set my shit Word. out. That's what we do as comics. Yeah, my process. So you write before you put it on stage. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. not. Um, I'm only recently became very comfortable. Um like, coming up with shit off the fly. But, like, I have to have, because I don't medicate as much as I should, <laughs> um, because I don't always medicate, um, I have too many thoughts going on in my head, and it, mm -hmm. I'm easily distractible, so I have to know what I'm going to say before I get up there, and I have to know the direction that I'm going. I can make up shit as I'm going along, but I yeah. have to have something that's tethering me. Like, I have to be tethered to something. Like, I can't just go on with nothing to say. Right. Um, and a lot of my most atrocious shit comes when I'm just sitting down minding my own business. I should not be left unsupervised. <laughs> <laughs> that is the truth. <laughs> that uh, I mean, dude, I like getting on stage and like with a premise and see where I can go with it the first time, you know, and pull what I can pull out of it, and then I go right, you know, then I fucking do it again and record it and shorten it back down. Hmm. Um, that's that's just I like finding out people's writing processes, you know. Sometimes I talk to my stupid ass best friend, and by stupid I don't mean intelligent. I just mean like, why, who let you speak like that? <laughs> Me and her are that person. We find ourselves getting um, shout out to Ariel, 
um, we find ourselves getting Little Mermaid. Mm-hmm. What's up? Except that bitch. I don't know. I don't know how to describe her. <laughs> She's my bestie. Um, there you go. <laughs> when we get on the phone, shout out to Ariel. What's up? When we get on the phone, uh, we say the wildest shit. Like if I'm gonna quote her, um, we was talking about um, my my religion, the holy oligarchy of evangelical silence, or hoes for short. Um, we were talking about that. She was like, ooh, ooh, you need to say that um, this bitch gave me this idea, and I never said it out loud because I said that's not an okay thing to say. This bitch told me, ooh, um, the men in your religion uh, need a fuck punch card. I said, bitch, that's coercion. We can't, that's sexual coercion. I'm about to say a fuck punch card. What is that? She said that's how they get, um, that's how they get products and services. Products and services for what? Fucking? Yeah, you got to fuck a higher-up woman for that. I said, that's not okay. I can't well, say that. But what if they ain't got no good dick? Does that <laughs> higher-up woman want to have this They're destitute. insufficient packer <laughs> in them? <No>. I don't <laughs> know, but I said, bitch, that's sexual assault. Yeah, that is. Uh, that, so sex huh. would be the, the mode of a payment is what you're saying. Yes. With the fuck punch card. No, I don't think that goes. <laughs> uh, that's not I don't think that goes well. over well on stage. Well, yeah. <laughs> the bitch wild. The bitch is wild. And that's why she's my bestie. Yeah. You got to have somebody in your life that's not a comic to throw, throw shit at sometimes. It's like spaghetti at the wall to see if it sticks. Not spaghetti at the wall. <laughs> you know? <laughs> we can't get that stain out. <laughs> we don't care. We're Italian. Just, is it done? It's <laughs> I don't know. I do have a lot of people in my life because, like, everybody um, in my life is a fucking dummy. Um, Damn. Every, everybody, <laughs> a fucking dummy. And I don't mean intelligent was wise. I, I, I surround myself with a lot of intelligent people. It's just, like, who gave you a voice to speak? Because, like, well, that's atrocious, what you just said. And see, that's my favorite kind of people. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of people don't, like, personally, before I started comedy, when I, f I started, I found out my tongue was ignorant. You know, like, and yeah. they, and a lot of people are like that. We just go on about life, and we talk, and we listen to fucking music and everything. We got influences coming in from every direction, and we usually don't realize that's what's influencing the way we speak and put words out into the world, mm -hmm. you know? So when I started comedy, and it wasn't good for the first 10 months, you know what I mean? But I, I started to Damn, learn. you kept that up for 10 months? Fuck, dude, I bombed for a while. Uh, so <laughs> sometimes it only take, it, it, it takes it takes like old twice scene for me too. to stop something. I almost got asked not to come back to twelve oh, mile limit. Wait, what you did at twelve <laughs> mile? Wait, 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 wait. No, hold on, hold on. Fuck whatever else she was about to say. I need to know this story. Wait. I don't even. I mean, just the jokes I would tell, bro. Oh, you know what I'm very, saying? That's the a jokes very, I, in the beginning, the jokes I would tell would have half of the room crying, laughing, and the other half of the room pissed. Yeah, it's kind of that and, room is a. Um, and yeah, it's you got to learn how to tell jokes in that room. It's a, it's a, you know what I mean. If your jokes go over well for, through a whole set, then you, you, you know, you're kind of well rounded, at that point. That you room know? is a landmine. So I learned, morality. I did, yeah, I did. That's why I started doing that. Five months, I did twelve mile limit, and before I learned that, you had to go to other mics and kind of like learn the terrain and stuff like that. So I mm -hmm. backed up right at the right moment because I didn't want to be asked not to come back. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. just my some of my jokes were so fucking nasty. And I would fucking do crowd work and do nasty crowd work. Worse too, than you know. red uh, Yeah, mm. way worse. Um, uh, you know, unorthodox shit that wasn't planned or worked out. You, you know, know what I mean? Set, um, I was a raw. I was a raw pickle. You know, oh, I was I was a raw pickle. You right? know that set at Proving Ground we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Where you saw me. A lot of that was off the cuff. Like. Yeah. Um. Well, no, I planned my off the cuff because my my shit just sounds odd. I don't know. I'm just, I'm an odd person. Yeah. And I tried. I'm, I was about to say I tried not to be, but that'd be a fucking lie. Yeah. I love it. But I mean, getting into comedy, I learned there's a way to put anything out there. You just got to do it right. 
Yeah. You that's know what, what I mean? I believe. Um, that's you, what I tell other comedians. Words are important, dude. Like, the way you place your words in an order and then tell them to a crowd. Like, I really learned my tongue was ignorant. I had to relearn how to, like, speak and shit like that. It was... Mm. And plus, I'm dyslexic, you know, so. <laughs> so I don't know why that's so funny. Um, it played, yeah, crowds love it. Uh, <laughs> especially when I start fucking words up, I'm like, fuck y'all, I'm dyslexic. They uh, they love that shit. Uh, <laughs> we, but I had I found that out, and I was like, fuck, man, I got to rethink about words that I fucking say all the time now. I had you know? to, too, because um, I realized I say things in a very complicated way. Mm -hmm. And, like, when um, you're laughing, you're listening. But if you're thinking, you're not laughing and you're not listening. Right. So um, I had to really, like, like somebody, to, like, um, something that I was told a few, I'm sorry, something that I was told a few times um, doing stand-up was that um, I was a very, my words were smart, dumb. Yeah. They, like somebody told me that people like one time I didn't do well or as well as I want to. Um, and they like somebody came to me and said that your jokes are too cerebral, to which I said, I just told a joke about the almighty nut that giveth and taketh away. And you tell him <laughs> you could you didn't understand that. Yeah. I was like, I'm, I'm very straightforward. I was yeah. I was talking about like asexuality. Um, you know that joke. Right. Probably. I probably heard it. Yeah, and I was like, nothing. I said, you telling me it was cerebral when I said that ejaculation got y'all in a chokehold. That's what you're mm. telling me? <laughs> that y'all live and die by the almighty nut? You telling me that that was cerebral? Yeah. Mm. But mm, maybe she meant, like, the way, the manner in which I speak. I don't know. Well, um, what I was getting at also is, like, uh, people who are not, people who don't get on stage and people who don't work on their speech all the time like you in school you got to work on your speech through speech classes through through these events debate events and you got to do stand-up so you got to work on that skill early in life which is amazing that's why you blew my mind earlier with with what you were telling me because kids don't get to do that shit we don't find out what stand-up is uh, unless we're watching tv most of the time you know or we're listening through uh through another uh, person in our life who puts on like an album when we're younger, you mm -hmm. know, um, we don't get to work that skill. And people who don't do that every day, they they don't they don't look at stuff the way we look at it. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. almost an advantage. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody thinks a, a small way to put it, like a short and, and, and short and definite, is like everybody thinks they're a comic. Well, there is a difference between comic and, and comedian. You could be a funny person, right? You could be a funny person, but that doesn't mean you're a comic. You know, I get people all the time that are like, I'm a comic, and I'm like, oh, are you? Come to my thing, and they're like, no, I'm more of like friendship comic. You know, it's like, yeah. Oh, you're you a comic know, relief. You're a <laughs> <laughs> you can get in a group of friends and talk shit. You know, no, but anybody can do that. Right. And that's what I'm saying. I did that professionally for the first 12 years of my that's, life. And, but that's what I'm saying. Some people, um, they get that confused as comedy, mm. stand up comedy. You know, maybe I say one or two things funny in a group, but getting up on stage is a completely different thing. Mm -hmm. And you got to re rearrange everything that comes out your mouth. Whenever you get on stage, mm, it's definitely a science to it, and it was a, um, it's a, it really is a learning experience, and there's a learning curve to it a mm -hmm. lot of the times because like a lot of getting on stage and doing comedy is about psychology, and a lot of people yeah. don't seem to like look at it like as like that because the way you structure your jokes um, has like cultural significance, like yeah. what, what you're saying um, can have cultural it's, it's, oh, cultural significance. Um, it could be cerebral in a way, like the the way you're thinking. Mm -hmm. It could be, I'm running out of things to say. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, so. No, it, it, everything, you work on everything. You don't realize how much you got to work on until you get on the stage. Just standing there and saying shit to people or holding the mic is a, a skill. You know what I mean? Um so I try to teach all that shit in, in my open mic. When I see that, when people are serious about it, I throw them gems, you know. Mm -hmm. You should get your mic, dude. You should. You would. Uh, you you would got do, a mic at your house? Um, 
Yeah, I got a mic at my house. I got mics everywhere in my life. I'm a comic. Mm. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. That's no, what I'm saying is like in your yeah. life, I'm on the orthodox. In your life, you know, get you a mic, girl. Go get a spot and do a mic. I think oh, that was a you good mean like an, Oh, I thought you were saying like you have actual microphones just hanging around yeah. your house. I mean, I have microphones too because I produce my own shows. So you know, I gave you a way to backpedal, and you just you just dug your heel in it. You could have just you could have just said no, I was wrong. No, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. I was I was, I knew what I was telling you. I'm weak, <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm not. Me and another comedian have been thinking uh, about like opening a mic or about like um oh oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Good. Um, and, you know, just doing things out there. But um, with me wanting to travel way more this year, I'm thinking about the logistics of it the, or the practicality of it. Um, yeah, I'll figure it out. Well, if you got it with somebody else, that's easy. See, I travel and I just put somebody else on that bitch. It's not that hard. Hmm. You just pay them. I don't like that. You don't like paying no, somebody? I'm fucking, I'm fucking around. I'm fucking <laughs> you don't like paying? <laughs> I'm fucking around. It's also giving somebody else experience as a host. That is true. You know, and that's what our scene needs, more people to have that host experience because that, that really brings a level up. I've hosted a few times. I set it off one time, and the other time it was just... Uh, yeah, but that consistency of hosting is where it's going to... You're going to see a real change in yourself. Hmm. You know, it really does. It really does give uh, uh, you a new perspective of your whole outlook on it, too. Because you, you become wave structure. You find that structure that you're looking for. You know, those questions that you tell you, you ask yourself, this is what I want to do. You'll find it through hosting. It teaches you, hosting teaches you how to tell jokes in bursts, mm -hmm. which is a, what I can appreciate. Um, like my heaviest hidden jokes um, are setups. And when I was like, when I was told to do time in between, I was like, this joke takes 10 minutes. Yeah. So. I was like, okay, it showed me how to uh, shortcut jokes to where I could get, like, the optimum laughs without needing as much of the fat as I needed from when it was a 10-minute set. Okay. Um, but I'm still awful at it. And also, that's – hosting gets – it, it, it well-rounds everything about your game, too. Throws endurance at you. I found an endurance. This last year, 2022, I found my endurance – you know what I mean? I've been able to do like 50 minute sets here and there, but a lot of 30 plus minute sets. You know, I've been able to, I've been blessed to go do, you know, mm -hmm. hosting, dude. Get your mic. Uh, we got to wrap it up right now. For real. Uh, you got anything you want to put out there in the world plug? Uh, shows coming up. Not much I can talk about, but um, yeah. um, I'm going to be doing a theater show, three day run with you and Mo Alexander. Yeah, you are. Mm hmm. Fucking right. Mm -hmm. Um, got my family coming. Um, That's which the 26th, 27th, and 28th, by the, the way. Zygate? Zygate's Theater. Mm -hmm. Off of St. Claude. Um, I got my family coming out to that. And nice. I'm already regretting it because you can't take New Orleans people nowhere. <laughs> uh, I took my family to L.A. with me to do the uh, the comedy store and the Laugh Factory. I ain't never Ooh. doing that shit again. Oh, yeah? Never doing that shit again. I'm afraid of the day my mama steps foot in a uh, comedy club. And I'm doing comedy. I'm, I'm scared of that day. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid my family, if somebody, like, heckles me or boos me, they're going to jump them. That's what I'm afraid of. Oh, shit. <laughs> my family is a one pop, all pop, don't pop, get pop type. <laughs> yeah, they were about to do that in Brandon Haynes. Uh, Brandon Haynes' family, they came to the roast, and people were roasting the shit out of them. And they were like, we don't like this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love Shout it. out, Brandon Haynes. I love you, bro. Uh, yeah, you don't invite your family to shit like that. <laughs> I mean, he's selling out the rooms, baby. I would never invite my family to a roast because the, that drive on the way back, I'm going to kill them, but like my mm. family, the drive on the way back, what the fuck they meant when they said blah, 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 because we could turn around right now. I'm not, no, mama, it was a joke. <laughs> we are joking. <laughs> you got anything on the road you want to promote that you got any dates you know about? Um, I'm doing the Laugh Factory again. I'm doing the bigger stage in July and June. I'll be uh, in New York for the Black Women in Comedy Fest. Hell yeah. And those are just two of the things that I've applied for so far. Well, yeah, that I've applied for so far. Cool. That's what's up. Well, I didn't apply to the Laugh Factory, but you know what I mean. But yeah. I'm going to be hitting more things. Oh, you should, bro. I'm applying to festivals right now. You have uh, how many festivals you got to do? 
Um, it, we're only in 11 days, and I only applied to one so far. But okay. um, I'm trying – you know how it's hard to choose between – to figure out what is a legit festival versus a non-legit festival? Yeah. Yeah, so that's just what I'm doing. That's something I you just want to do, basically. I, I just read it and how long they've been doing the festivals and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Just – if I got the money for it, too. <laughs> well, that's why you got a business account. Yeah, I'm getting there. It's easy. I'm, I'm gonna show you. <laughs> I'm getting to the LLC thing. That's it's, that's another thing this year. I'm getting to the LLC, and making it a complete business. You know, making myself the complete business this year. Hmm. You know, and starting to pay taxes with it because that's where it's starting to get to, just from doing gigs so much. Um, yeah, all my stat any any money that I don't make from like a nine to five job goes straight to my business account. Yeah. Yeah. You got anything else uh, you want to put out there to the universe? You can follow me on Instagram at a.gram.of.sia because I'm going to make you work for it. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, and Hell I'm yeah. not very, uh, I'm learning to be more consistent on social media platforms, so I'm not even going to plug the other ones. Okay. But that's the one I'm the most consistent on besides Facebook, obviously. I have to be. All right. Well, thank you for coming in today, my friend. Thank you. No uh, make sure y'all go follow Saya Mead. She is going to be one of the biggest things coming out of New Orleans. You oh just wait God. and see. Uh, and I love you to death. I appreciate you coming out here and spending uh, your time with me today. Uh, if y'all are in New me. Orleans, um, come out to another bar every Tuesday night. We are at another bar. I got a great open mic. You can see people like Siamese and other great comics in our scene come work out their material. Um, also, uh, again, I'm going to be at Dragon's Den on the 20th. Um, I get to do bonkers this week, first time. My first MGM casino. Okay, yeah, I was about to say, um, I didn't even know what the fuck that was. It's Mississippi. I didn't know they had a comedy club, but I got in there. Uh, <laughs> also, you can come see uh, me and Sia Meads. We are opening up for Mo Alexander, you guys, uh, at the end of the month, January 26th, 27th, 8th, at the Z Zygites Theater. You can go to, uh, I think it's zygites.org and get tickets. Zygitesnola.org and get tickets. It's an organization? Uh, I mean, that's just what their thing is. It's, they got an org instead of a dot com. Okay. You know, O R G. O R G. The org. Uh, the but uh, besides that, I will be in. I will be in New York the ninth and the tenth. In the eleventh, I will be in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania at Scranton Comedy Club. Uh, come get some tickets for that, you guys. Come out and see me. And uh, that's all I'm gonna plug today. That's all I got, man. Thank you for coming in, my friend. No Thank you. Uh, thank y'all for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button, like, and uh, share, you guys. Thank y'all for watching.